Hello and welcome. My name is Sheep Thief, and today I'll be coming at you with some Dominion's Five Warriors of the Faith multiplayer online gameplay. <coughs> um, I just turn. This is episode forty-three, I believe, or two. We're in late winter in the year three. Um, we'll start as usual with the uh, war. Uh, so. Last turn we started invading Helheim through here and we, in retrospect, were very brash and undisciplined with it. Um, we'll start with the bad news. We sent a Melkar into here and this was largely empty. I didn't even think there was a army here, but it looks like more than that and our Melkart ran into a large stack of sacred Helheim cavalry which are really strong and uh, they have like a demon priest let's look at their blessing magic weapon shock resistance poison resistance fire resistance defense skill undying blood surge standard rainbow bless um, and yeah definitely the issue here was actually I'm going to restart this to show you the problem we only got a few of our casts off so we got blessing earth power and that's it and so the result was our Melkart was woefully unbuffed only 21 protection no um, legions of steel no iron skin no temper flesh so just not quite enough protection and our regen not quite good enough and the result is that it died it got kind of surrounded and the yeah, just about a lot more attacks than what we're used to we're getting through. And it eventually died. Um, a pity, a huge pity, because this is the one of our most experienced Melkarts. As you can see in the uh, Hall of Fame, it was at the top of the entire game in terms of kills. It's dead now very sad um, what the issue was was that our <coughs> our uh, script was off we were casting beforehand blessing earth power iron skin legions of steel temper flesh now we're going to um, <coughs> do blessing iron skin temper flesh uh, just so this doesn't happen again Legions of Steel at the end. Although, probably get more protection. The question is, grants natural protection 20. What is our natural protection at? Okay, so Iron Skin gives us 15 natural protection. That's pretty good. So yeah, I think Iron Skin should come first. Temper Flesh gives us Slash Blunt and Pierce Resistance. I don't know exactly how that works. I think this is how we have to do it. Um, <clears throat> so we switched that up. We were, I mean, there's no way to see this coming, and I guess we learned our lesson with our script. Um, what is more unacceptable is that this province we had last turn, and we, this guy was here, and he moved into this province, and a black servant took it, because we didn't put any PD in it. So, that was that's a total rookie mistake. Um, yeah. Uh, the other bad news with the war is that we got attacked here by a Helheim. This is the AI that I'm fighting against, which is what makes this so irritating. 
Um, we got attacked by this force here of shades. And just like an undead force, I guess. Whites with Bane Blades and a like a Hellcarl. Yeah. Um, fortunately, we won. Our, but, well, okay, so they, they move forward. Our imps and wolves kill the uh, shades. And then we kill the commander, thankfully, before anything really bad happens. Um, but the problem is that both our wolves and our imps are scattered to the winds. They both retreat. So as you can see, there are wolves and imps everywhere. We're trying to collect them. Look at all this. Um, over here, he can't lead undead units. Oh my god. Um, yeah. And this was a blood hunting province, and so now our patrol is basically non existent. Um, this is a huge problem. Uh, we probably can't blood hunt here, but we'll talk about this in our blood hunt when we talk about blood hunting. So that's. The current situation with the war, not a good turn. Probably the worst turn of the game so far. This was really bad. We lost a Melkart, stupidly lost a province, and got a blood uh, hunting province totally messed up by an AI. So, we need to lock it in. The current issue is that uh, there's this huge army here. We didn't kill many... Uh, Of these hell herdings, there are 43 of them. That's a lot. That's a lot of hell herdings, and I'm just not happy about the idea of a huge stack of hell herdings coming through this part of my territory. Uh, I didn't really expect the AI to behave like this. I, I just underestimated the AI. Um, so. The immediate emergency is where will this big army go? They could go and try to relieve this siege and probably win a fight against uh, these things. Um, okay, let's uh, go to Commander. Um, this fortification has not been broken. So what we're going to do is move this off. The qu okay, so this force will probably be destroyed by by this force. Let's look at the army again. Uh, just a huge stack of hell herdings. These are not a problem. Nothing nothing here is a problem. The problem are these. These are really strong. And are they doing a divine blessing? Yeah, this is... Oh, how is he doing divine blessing? He must have a prophet here. Yeah, okay. Ask the prophet. Okay, so, but we can see the Hellhoodings are on the flank there. Um, the question is, can our stack of Rephaim even destroy them? 29 units. Twenty nine Rephaim versus forty three Handergots or whatever they're called. Hell Hootings. The other question is will they even attack here? What about twenty nine Rephaim with all this? I think we'd want that on that side.
Um, if we had our like demon army down here, that would be good. Because I think the attack rear might be the uh, way to do this. But we don't. So. What I was thinking right now is. If they attack here. If they move up through here. I don't want to lose this army to this. This is like, it's an AI. I don't want to like spend resources on this. We're bringing everything here to try to stabilize the blood hunting situation. I guess we'll just research. Um, yeah, really not, uh, not good. We'll continue to think about this, but move on for now and see if we get any insight. Um, yeah, I guess other than that, we are, move, we're going to continue to just sort of take what provinces we can. Um, we do have this stack of archers here, which could move in. They won't be amazing against Helheim, but... They could at least be siege chaff and doing something. I think we'll pick up these right here. What would be good are these fire drakes, especially in concert with um, the demon army, which has a ton of fire resistance. So... But they have the the sacreds have fire resistance ten and they're bless. Yeah, th this is a debacle. I don't really know how to fight this. I think we just have to have a man fight with our Rephaim and their hell herdings. But let's think about it. Other than that, our movements are just these two Melkarts moving in here. I don't think they can get across this mountain range. We've adjusted the script. I think if we got our full script off, we could kill. We we our Melkart would have lived, but the Hell Herdings move so fast that they get across the map before the Melkart can finish. So yeah, that's uh that's that. I guess. I guess the other thing we could do is um, have them start all the way back as far as possible. Now, um, next. Fomoria finally killed a, uh, the monolith. We can watch it. Hope if it's not too long. Again, he just brings all this cast horde of skeletons and stuff. I don't know what he's doing. And they start getting here and start wailing on it. This is what he needed to do from the beginning. And it dies. Well, <clears throat> good fight to the uh, monolith. Uh, it definitely was a thorn in Fomoria's side for a long time. However, uh, it has finally fallen, and with it, as we can see, Agartha is permanently vanquished. Now, um,. Our blood economy. We thankfully gathered our slaves despite. Well, thankfully, we fended off this attack here, uh, which was really good. We. Where was that? It was here. All of those should. Wait, no, okay. These are all my units. Great. So we lost 11 Mezakim, 7 wolves, and 26 long deads. Nothing that important died, and basically all of their things died, so that's good. Uh, the problem is our patrol force is now gone. Um, but we got blood slaves from it, and we captured a total of... I was trying to do the math here, that's uh, 27 plus 28 is 
55. Yeah, 55. So we got 55 blood slaves. Did I already write that down? Yeah. Um, which is pretty good. We are summoning a vampire lord right here. You can see cast curse of blood. Um, and the other news is that despite being underneath 5,000, we got 28 blood slaves from this province. So I think we're just going to hunt it into until it's a barren wasteland um, or basically until we start getting terrible returns um, oh yeah I'm trying to not say um so that's another goal for this another Dominion's five points of improvement is to not say um now the Blood hunt went well. The question is, do we spend our 52 slaves or save up? And I think the answer is we save up for another vampire lord. So we're gonna make we're making a sanguine dousing rod, but I don't think we need it actually, because what I think is gonna happen is the um, The Vampire Lord will, which has death, it has blood three, death three. The Vampire Lord will in turn make its own Vampire Lords. So we're going to make one with our god, and then pass the skull staff onto it, and then make another one. And so, in order to do that, we need to get another 25 slaves this turn. And I hope, I desperately hope that we'll have enough. Um, and then with that Vampire Lord, will make another vampire lord hopefully every turn and s and the vampire the new vampire lords will come down to Ermor and start hunting uh they're also good thugs so yeah now um the question is do we add another cohen farm like we have here and here and like we had here maybe I think if we what well, what I'll say is this if we don't get 77 blood slaves next turn for another vampire lord then we will make another Cohen farm I think the vampire lords since they can sort of self replicate they are the key to like really exploding our blood economy but the question is will some like this is a weirdness that happened that I don't like and we're adding new territories and eventually we'll take over Helheim I just don't know how we're going to destroy this army with the resources we have here if we brought in all of our stuff we could do it but that's multiple turns away from happening I wonder if we should start moving an army down there. We have a bunch of Rephaim. A bunch of Siege. We could move two balls. What if we did something like this? best way to do this would be to snipe the commander of the Helheim sacred stack. Yeah. 
These don't have magic weapons though. They could just get destroyed. And we're missing out on like 50 research now. I think what we'll do is I think we will do that. Is that right? Okay, I don't care. You get there. Just get... Uh, oh, they can both get there really fast for some reason. Yeah. I, we need reinforcements down here, so... Let's do it, and we'll bring uh, these archers. Question is, do we get these archers down here? Yeah, we'll get the archers and the fi and the fire drakes as well. And uh, do these have fire resistance? No. Well, yeah, I think we need to bring reinforcements down for this war with Helheim. We can also kind of test stuff out, and. Um, use the balls to like set things up down here like temples and things like that so uh we're gonna move off of this siege unfortunately and take this palisade uh in fact we'll have is there a way to make these guys move and siege i guess not So I guess it'll be up to these guys to take the fort. Hopefully there's nothing in there that will like destroy this. These are these could just lead the charge. But if we get attacked, we want them holding an attacker. So we'll just leave it like this. And these should um back up against the Hellherdines. These should be shifted double line sort of like this. Um, actually, you know what? We'll have the skeletons we'll have these guys hold an attack rear These guys, these guys are diseased, but we'll just have them guard commander. And we'll take this palisades, which kind of guards this whole, uh, like this is all mountain that you can't like cross. This is like the passageway up through here. Then there's a river here. Uh, and then we will have these two armies come in and sort of uh, fence off this, hopefully. They can't get through there. So if we get here before they do, that would be good. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to do for the war. We've set up defense here. We put 11 defense in each place. Um, it's possible they retake it, but uh, might as well get the unrest down. We learned our lesson here. Uh, once we... I think our astral mail carts are not quite ready for fighting. First of all, they don't have... Oh, and, and I guess this diverts into research, so... Yeah. Research. Let's look at it. Um... We are one turn away from Thaumaturgy 3, and I think in total about five turns from Construction 6, which is once we get Construction 6, a few turns after that, 
we will uh, our astral mail carts will be ready to go. Uh, we're using this Mage of Autumn to be to start constructing shade mail harbingers, um, which will start going on the astral mail carts. Uh, this guy here, I gave him a crystal coin, and he's on crystal coin production. We got another astral mail cart. Um, now what we want is a earth mail cart. We don't want a fire one, and I think we have enough astral ones. What we want now are earth ones. It's it really hurts actually losing this earth mail cart here. Uh, they're good at just like brute force fighting. Now, um, after so research, um, yeah, I'd say five turns. So basically, it, we've got sixty-one left to go on thaumaturgy, and then seven hundred. So two and a half turns for construction five, and then construction six is fourteen. So it's a total of about 2,150 research points to go, which we should do in five turns. That's it. Uh, so then we'll have construction six, which will be a big boost. After that, Thaumaturgy five uh, for Soul Slay, uh, which sets, and Gateway. Gateway will set, like, I wish we had Gateway right now because we could just teleport these balls over here and then they'd be there. We wouldn't have to walk. Uh, it'll also be really good for teleporting um, Rephaim around without causing unrest as they move around. So, yeah, uh, I keep saying uh. So, Thaumaturgy 5, important. And then we're going to climb Evocation and s make a brief stop at Enchantment 4 for Flaming Arrows. And evocation has a number of things that will be really good for us. A bunch of fire evocation, a bunch of air, like we could do thunder strikes and stuff. Um, earth. I don't know, actually. Earth. Maybe not great. Uh, we could probably do gifts from heaven or something. I don't know. Earthquake we could probably do as well might be good against Ulm and Marverni with their sort of weak human troops. Astral. Um, number of things we could do here. Death. Maybe not really. Uh, anyway. The main th reason we're climbing Evocation is for Mind Hunt at level 6, which will be good for, I think, what it will be our inevitable war with Fomoria, unless he takes the win without fighting me. So, yeah, climbing evocation to set up our mind hunt farm, which we can do because we've got a lot of astral balls. Uh, then, one thing I was thinking about is what to do after that. It's sort of tempting to keep climbing blood if we get a ton of blood slaves. Blood 8 would get us Heliophagi, which are good super combatants, although we already have a lot of them. It could also get us Blood Vortex, which gets us a huge number of blood slaves every turn. Um, it's like 166 doesn't even seem that expensive. The question would be getting a blood mage that high. We have a Blood 5 with that Armor of Thorns. So then Brazen Vessel and Bloodthorn, and he'd be able to cast that. Not a terrible idea. He could also do Astral Corruption if we think... If these vampires really take off, we might do Astral Corruption and just fully rely, rely on Blood Magic. Um, this basically makes it so that if, you ever, if anyone in the game casts a non blood spell, they get attacked by horrors. Not a terrible idea. We could probably get him that high. Wait, you need Astral 6 though. I don't know how we'd get that guy that high. He'd need a Ast a Star Shine Skull Cap, a Crystal Coin, a He's at 2 right now. So I would get him up to four. And then we'd probably have to... Let me just see. He 
can't wear any armor, so we couldn't give him a robe of the Magi or anything, which I think we can make with our god at some point. So he's at blood five. He needs... How much does he need? Seven. No, wait. Six and six. So he'd need a brazen vessel and a blood thorn. That gets him up to... No, he just needs one of these to get up to blood six. And to gain four points in astral, he'd need crystal coin, starshine, skull cap. Yeah, I don't think this is possible. Maybe for our god, if we can get a robe of the magi out, our god would be at um, blood five, astral four. So then we'd give him a blood thorn, a crystal coin, and a starshine skull cap, and he'd be able to cast it. So yeah, if we want to do that, that's what we'd have to do. So, just to remember, this is, this is me thinking out loud, to remember, to cast Astral Corruption, it will have to be our god. And for Blood Vortex, it will be that other, uh, m that Melkart, that Blood 5 Melkart. Now, higher stuff, we're going to have to, Blood 9 is, I think it's like 4, no, it's way more than that. I th it's got to be like 8,000 research points. So that seems pretty far off right now. Unless our research really starts to accelerate. I'm just not seeing that happen. But there are a lot of things we could do in here. Like these demon summoning things. Really good. Like look at this. Seven devils for 50. Oh, we also get 20 imps. Wait. Wait. Yeah, seven devils and twenty imps, that's good. Uh Infernal Crusade, ten plus demon knights. Very strong. And then of course our uh insane super combatants, which would be cool for this uh series to finish off the game. But I think by the time we're here we are chant like I don't know, we'll see. It depends how long the game drags out. Uh, but that that's just climbing blood. There, the other things that we could climb, I think, are alteration, which just have has a number of things that would be great for our super combatants, um, especially if we're super combatanting or if we have a lot of vampire lords, we might want to get up to alteration six for soul vortex. Just a lot of things in here. We could also climb conjuration for. Um, Nyads, wherever they are, to get water going, which is sort of the final question of this uh, episode, is what do we do with our water and fire gems? So yeah, I think maybe con Conjuration 5, we might f slip that in, um, just to make sure, and, then, and also Elementals, uh, which are always good, and... Yeah, Conjuration is good. So, I don't know. I'm thinking we still have a ways to go before this will happen. We still have to get to Evocation 6. And by that time, it'll be like year 5. So, or later. So, uh, definitely a ways to go before this is really an issue. But I'm just thinking about it. Um, what to do with our Air and Fire Gems? Not quite sure yet, but it's on my mind. We're, we're making Fire Drakes here. Uh, the other thing we could make is lightless lanterns, which are better than owl quills for research uh, boosting. But yeah, so that that could be a big dump for the fire gems. Water gems, I'm not so sure. Not sure what to do with those. Maybe those naiad warriors with awe. I don't know if that's a very efficient spell. But yeah, I think that pretty much closes out the episode. This is the big question here. I think it's I feel a lot better now that we're bringing this army down. 
and what we don't want is Helheim to just start taking all of our territory. That would be a giant pain. Um, and the actually the worst thing, way worse than that, would be losing this army to this. It's this is what I don't like about people stealing and going AI and stuff is that if this was a player that I was fighting, I'd be like, this would be great. This is this would be a cool war. It'd be a close fight. It'd be good. But I'm fighting an AI, and it's doing stuff that doesn't... I don't know what it's going to do. There's no, like, thinking about what it's thinking, because it's not thinking. It's just sort of robotically doing things that don't make sense. And uh, so little triggered about this, but we'll we'll see what happens, and hopefully we don't... Hopefully nothing bad happens. Uh, yeah, so... Wish me luck with that. We, f we finally got, I guess the big thing is to, to end on a positive note, we finally got the Vampire Lords coming out, which means hopefully our blood economy will start to explode, and... Yeah. Which means we can start pumping things out, and just everything will get better. So anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, I will catch you guys in the next episode. Um, wait, hold on. I'm trying to think. Are we sure we're recruiting things everywhere? Recruiting there. Got PD in here. Can we put PD in here? No. Let's put PD here. Why can't I do that? It's not letting me put PD in that. Weird. Whatever. Oh, it's because there's zero population. Interesting. Whatever, we got a fourth there. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll end it there. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.